All right. First of all, I'd just like to say welcome to uh, the Achievement Labs version of Natural Resources and Wildlife Management course. Um, if you're new to our building, uh, welcome to SWAS also. Um, I kind of set up this course in line with a course that I just started teaching last year. So some of the materials are relatively new. Uh, they'll be updated as you go through here because a lot of these are Google Docs. And that way, if I update it on the course, it'll be updated too um, for the Achievement Lab. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview. You're going to take some notes on this, and you're going to use the Create tab to submit this to Schoology, and then you can move on to the next one. And so you can see the materials for this course. We have uh, the course materials. You also have Unit 1, Intro and Science. We'll go over that in a minute. Unit 2, Natural Resources Careers. Unit 3 is Wildlife Management. Unit 4 is Land Management. And unit 5 is Fish Management. Probably my favorite one to discuss because I do like to fish. I don't know if you can see this in the background, but there's a bragging board with a bunch of fish pictures on it in my classroom. If you get a chance, come on down and take a look at some of those pictures. Um, so first one, of course, overview, you'll do this one and then go on to creating a Gizmos account. I use the Gizmos website quite a bit in my classroom and also for some of my online courses. Uh, you'll click on this and you're going to create your own code. So the class code is this, RMGZ8L. And you go to this website and where it says log in and enroll, you're going to click here and you're going to enter this code. And once you enter that code, it'll take you to another window where you're going to create your login and your password. Uh, if you struggle with this, come and see me and I can take you through it, okay? Because it's critical to get this step done right away at the beginning. And so if I were to log in just to my class and just give you a brief overview of what Gizmos looks like, you can see we have our natural resources course. And there are basically, I'm going to say there are one, two, three, four Gizmos you do for this class. Probably not going to do this forest ecosystem one. I really didn't. Didn't enjoy that one because when you added hunting and logging, it didn't really represent what happens in an ecosystem. And I've sent them an email about that because it's not true. Hunters actually manage populations. They don't decimate them. There's a big difference. And I didn't want students to get that misconception. So if I go back to my classes, natural resources, and you can see we have the ecosystems. This is a STEM case. So science, technology, engineering, and math is kind of cool. You get to fly a drone around and take pictures of populations and measure them. Uh, estimating population size, I'll get into that in the fish management one. And then also uh, measuring trees, which is important if you're going to go ahead and manage your land for trees. And then also just a little basic intro to science. There's a germination lab where you look at plants. If you're in my course, we would use... Um, a tower garden and grow plants or we grow plants outside. So I thought this would be a great way for you to get uh, some exposure to the scientific method again, because it is important. All right. So going back to the course, you'll create your Gizmos account and then you'll be done basically with that first, well, first unit within this course. So now you go into unit one. Um, there's an intro to natural resources course. And what you're going to do is you're going to use ed puzzle. Also, this is another website I use in this particular class. So when you click on this, you're not going to enter any school information. Please don't do that. You're going to scroll down and make sure that you're logged into your school issued Google account. It has to be your apps account. Okay. And so you're going to watch this video. And what I did is I read a story from this man's book. Uh, this is Bill Callies. He was a conservation officer, a game warden uh, in Northern Minnesota in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and I think a little bit into the early 80s too. So he had a pretty long career. So he has a bunch of stories uh, related to basically busting people for breaking game laws or fish laws. I mean, not doing what you're supposed to do. So you'll listen to this. When it says get started, you see down here, scroll down to Google. I'm even going to do this now because it's going to take me in as a student, which I, I don't know if that confuses Ed Puzzle or not. We'll just give it a minute here. Wait, get started again. Good time to think. So found it, natural resources, Brackabilka. There is a class code. So join the class. And that way you don't have to do anything. As long as you're logged into your school account, you'll be able to do every one of the ad puzzles that I have assigned for you. Okay, so you hit play. You can see I've got questions in here. So where you see these little, I guess, looks like water droplets to me 
or teardrops, those are questions that are in there. So you're gonna have to answer those. I go back and check to make sure that you completed the ad puzzle. So 13 minutes, it's gonna take you probably 20 minutes to complete this whole assignment. But it's an interesting story that I read uh, to my students when they're in the course. So if you have any questions with that puzzle or it's not working for you, please contact Matt or myself and we'll get you squared away. All right, so we go back into the materials section. So that first one is all about the intro to science and also you'll go next into the controlled study on germination. You'll look at the Eagle Cam and learn about DDT. And then once you're done with one of these, you're gonna go ahead and use the Create tab in Schoology uh, to reflect on each lesson in paragraph form. So what was 1.1 about? What was 1.2 about? What was 1.3, okay? I think that kind of speaks for itself. And if you've never used a Create tab for Schoology, click on this and there's a short tutorial that I've given you, um, just a little video that'll help you navigate. Your end would be Create tab over here. Whereas I have submissions that you are going to submit and that's where I'm going to grade them. So it looks a little bit different on the teacher end. All right, so going back into materials and then you'll get into natural resources, careers. So you can see a conservation officer, United States Fish and Wildlife Service, park ranger, naturalist, forester, fishing guide, and nonprofit organizations. So you're gonna research these seven careers. It goes pretty quick. I mean, just clicking on the first one here, don't be scared of these. There's seven questions that you answer using create tab. You know, what are the duties of a conservation officer? What are the education requirements? What schools in Minnesota, Wisconsin offer courses? Uh, what are the duties? Um, what is the starting average salary? Look up a weird story on this one, copy and paste it. I think you'll find several people acting like idiots in the wild and trying to get away with breaking game laws. All right, so now looking at unit three, wildlife management. So there's that first STEM case that you're gonna see. Then there's an ed, pose, ed puzzle about Minnesota's deer. If you've ever seen Minnesota Bound, it's a Ron Shera program. Um, I think it's Fox Sports North or Bally Sports North, whatever they're calling it now, but he uh, runs a pretty good show there. I don't know how many years he's been doing it, but it seems like forever. Then you get to this first one, Google Doc, Minnesota Deer Hunting Regulations. So you're going to click on this and it'll take you to this document. It'll say my document. You'll click on that, but you'll all see the Minnesota DNR regulations. So every hunter has to be informed before they take step into the woods about the game laws in their area. You can't plead ignorance. And so with this particular assignment, see it says trespass law, how far away from a building does one have to be to discharge a weapon? So I should probably change this to put the, the um, link, but there's the link here. And then you're going to go through the hunting and fish, hunting and trapping regulations handbook. Okay. It'll take you a little while to do this one. If you get stuck on something, don't just Google the answers either, because I guarantee if you Google that, you're going to find responses from other states too, because they have hunting and game regulations. And if you don't do it right with the Minnesota one, I will know because I hunt and fish in this state. So I know all the rules as it pertains, for the most part for Minnesota. And each year they change them. They make changes to the rules. So you'll go through that assignment, finish it, going back into this. And then the one I really wanted to focus on this one is Google Sheets data entry, Minnesota deer harvest 1989 to present day. One real world skill that you're gonna have to have is how to use spreadsheets. You know, you say, I'm never gonna use one of these, but if you own a business, chances are you're gonna use one of these. Your boss might ask you to put together some data too. If you're working for a company, you know, how many widgets were sold, okay? They wanna know. And when was the biggest day for widgets? So I'm not saying for sure you're going to use spreadsheets in your daily life, but if you get a job, you know, the chances are pretty high that you're going to use a spreadsheet. And so I put an instructional video here, but just to take you through this, here's the raw data starting in 1989 and going all the way to 2020. So 2021's data is not in yet. Uh, Mike did get a deer this year, by the way, so I'll probably have to change that for 2021. But you're going to enter this into a Google Sheets. And just to show you what this is, you hit the plus, you go over here, you'll see Sheets, you'll hit blank, and you're going to title this Deer Harvest Data. So that way it's in your Google Drive now forever. And you're going to put in the dates. So... I'm going to put in 1974, 1975, 1976.
if I want to go ahead and add a line because I screwed up, I can go up to insert and I can go to rows, insert one row above because I forgot to put time. In this case, measured in years. And I'm going to put deer harvested. Done. And let's just say in 1974, the year I was born, by the way, there were 160,000 deer harvested. 1975 was a tough year. Hunters only got 120,000 deer. 1976 was a banner year. There was lots of deer because nobody shot anything the year before. And so then when you're all done, you've entered this data. You can go up to insert. You can go to chart. And it makes a graph for you. It's pretty slick. Um, and here I can see, hey, a graph is a, a visual representation of your data. That's why we do graphs. You could do this by hand if you wanted, but it's going to be way easier to do it with a software program. Okay. And what's neat about this too, if I were to go back to this particular assignment here, where it says create a bar graph of the deer harvested, mm, I'm going to change that to line graph. I'm not sure why it says bar graph. I think that'd be better. And then you can insert your graph right here into this document. If I put the cursor there, hit enter, and I go up to insert chart from the sheets that I created. There's probably another way to do this too, but I can click here. I hit select. I highlight the graph that I want added. I click import and voila, it's in. Okay. So for every time you're doing data entry for me on your personal Google doc, you're going to enter this data or this graph, pardon me, into that Google doc also. Okay. I'm going to be looking for it. If you have any questions, come and see me. I, I love helping students with this because I think it is a real world skill learning how to enter data and then also learning how to make charts and then also interpreting that data. You know, down here, there are four follow up questions. You know, what long term trends do you see? What years had the lowest deer harvests? What years had the highest? And then I'm having to figure out the average deer that we shoot in Minnesota. And I'll take, you know, I'll take you through all these steps how to go ahead and uh, put a formula into a Google spreadsheet. Okay, and that's enough. I don't want to spend too much more time talking about that. But if you can see here, Google Sheets data entry, Google Doc Sheets again, winter severity index data, Google Data Sheets moose data entry. We do have moose in Minnesota. And so you're going to enter those in there. And I think it's kind of cool. All right. All right. So I'm going to go back into materials. And you can see the next one is land management. There is an ed puzzle here about Minnesota ecology that I put together talking specific, specifically about what caused Minnesota's ecology. Why do we have kind of these four distinct ecosystems, which makes you know, Minnesota kind of a unique state in that regard. There's an ed puzzle on the lumberjacks and the history of the long A industry up by Grand Rapids. There's a naturalist center up there. And then you can see forest industry trees, the emerald ash borer, and then you can see another gizmo, and then CRP. I just put a bunch of my land up north, my hunting land into CRP, so this is kind of a personal experience. As I go through this next year, I'll be planting uh, wild prairie, okay, some prairie grasses, and then also some pollinator plots for the bees. All right, so unit five is fish management. Yeah, fishing regulations, a little bit about Minnesota lakes, rivers, and streams get to know them, what caused them. Then you see this fish population statistics gizmo. You're going to learn about how uh, fisheries biologists use tagging of fish. Okay. They can tag them two ways. They can click, clip a dorsal fin, or they can actually put a physical tag into a fish. And I've caught a fish that's had its dorsal fin clipped. And I've also had a fish that had tag in it. It was kind of neat to see that. It was a little yellow tag on a walleye that I caught on Black's Lake. And so you're going to learn about how they figure out how many fish are in a lake. And it's basically using proportions. So if you've had algebra, this shouldn't be an issue for you. Then you're going to find a new lake to fish for walleyes using some of the data that they have on the DNR website. And then you're going to learn about the fish stocking program that Minnesota DNR uses to add walleyes in particular, but they add several different types of fish to our lakes in Minnesota. And then you'll learn lastly about aquatic invasive species. And then you'll write your little unit five fish management completion. Um, you know, this course is designed for you to finish it. I would say roughly if you work every day on this for a couple hours, you could probably finish it in two and a half weeks. 
roughly. Okay. It's not designed to be finished, you know, within a day. It is worth one elective credit. So that's exciting for you. Um, and I also think it's kind of interesting, especially if you're into these sorts of things. If you're into hunting and fishing, uh, I think you'll enjoy this course. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Send me an email. It's probably the best way to get a hold of me during the day or at any time, to be honest with you. Um, if you also have questions that you think Matt can answer, ask him too, and then he can direct them towards me if he stumbles on that particular uh, question. So I hope this was helpful. Um, make sure you submit your notes on this video to Schoology once you're done. Thanks. Have a good day.